of a unit circle. That's right. Each of these is that you know it's a unit circle. So it, the key thing you hear is describe in what? Words. Describe in words. Describe in words. Okay, so I asked you to do what? I asked you number six, right? So first of all, uh, what's one thing you can tell me, Seema? What's one very specific thing you can tell me about number six? What's one specific thing? Oh, thank you. Yeah, what's one specific thing? Go. Tell me. It goes clockwise. Who agrees that it goes clockwise? Raise your hand if you think it goes clockwise. Nice. Can someone give me one another specific thing? Papa saying, what's another specific thing? Uh, the y values are negative. All the y values are negative? Except uh, not all of them. Not all of them. So can you can someone be more specific? Give me something very specific. It tells you what to look for. It's going clockwise. Can someone tell me one other thing? The question asks you for two things. What? T can be anything. T can be a trillion, a bajillion, right? What does the question ask you specifically? Where the, par uh, where are the particles moving clockwise and where are the particles moving counterclockwise? Is it always moving clockwise? Yes. Okay, so clockwise, always. That's another specific thing. Is there anything, any other specific thing you can tell me? Yes, that's the I like. They're all positive, so they're never negative. Where's it start? Starts at what? One comma zero. That's nice. Is there any other thing? It's the same thing goes always clockwise. It starts at one zero. Is there any other anything else you can tell me? It doesn't give you a time interval, so it can be anything you want it to be. But like, could you say that the total time? Make one that is awesome. So you could say one revolution every what? Two pi. Every two pi. I love that. That's a great thing. Fantastic. The analysis can get deeper. The analysis can get deeper, but these are good facts for you to figure out. Why are these all circles? Well, if you square both of them and add them, you're always going to get back to x squared plus y squared equals what? The key is that what do you see in each of these? You see the same thing. If it's t squared there, it's t squared there. If it's t cubed minus t, it's t cubed minus t. Back to the board, new partner. One person stays, someone rotates. <laughs> okay, so what do you need to take first of each of these? What do you need to take first? I see a lot of it here. What do you find? Yeah, dx dt is going to be 2t. And what's dy dt? 3t squared. 3t squared. And you know that speed is equal to the what of velocity? Yeah, it's the what of velocity? The magnitude. It, absolute value is magnitude on a one-dimensional on a one-dimensional line, right? So these notations actually still work. So what's the velocity going to be? Well, it's just going to be the magnitude of the velocity, so it's the square root of what? The square root of what? 2t squared plus what? 3t squared. Squared. There it is. There's your speed. It's the magnitude of the velocity. If I asked you for what is the velocity vector, you would say what? Well, 2t comma what? I don't know why I put parentheses around it, right? Any times when the particle comes to a stop, what does stop mean? When, when v of t equals, well, actually, when the magnitude of that is 0, right? The magnitude of it is 0. Is that correct? So stop equals v of t equals 0, right? When does that happen? when t equals 0. At, at any other point, is it 0? Any other point, it's 0. No, because at any other point, you can just look at one of either, either 2t or 3t squared. The only time either one of them is 0 is on time equals 0. There are cool questions you will be asked, like, when is it going just up and down? When is it just going side to side? It's going up and down when the horizontal change is 0. It's going side to side when the vertical change is 0. This is a great way to analyze motion. It's fantastic. Molly, can you get the window, please? What I saw there, so you know that y is equal to t minus 4. So from that one, what does t equal? Y plus 4. t equals what? y plus 4. And where did you, oh, we want to get y equals, right? <laughs> so let's take that one. What does t equal here? x minus 1 over 3. So where do you plug that in? For t. Yeah, you take that, it plugs in there, I see that. So you guys end up with y is equal to what? x minus 3 minus what? 4. four. Right. So what do you end up with? Y is equal to, I don't know, one third x minus a third minus four. So what is that? Y is equal to what? One third x minus what? How many thirds? 13, 13 over three. Yeah, you guys wrote it different ways. So what, what kind of equation is that? So it's a line. 
And what kind of motion? Is this thing going from left to right or right to left? Left to right, yeah, as t goes to infinity, x goes to infinity, and y goes to what? Infinity, right? So you can be more specific than that. You can say left to right and what? Down to up, right? What else could you find out theoretically about this particle? Where it what? Where does it start? Where does it start? Starts at what? One comma what? Negative four. So it starts at one comma negative four and it moves in that direction. That's kind of cool. Is that pretty cool? Sure. Okay, back to the board, new partner. So what'd you do first? What'd you do first? What? Y is equal to what? Where? There's, I see two T's. I need more specific instruction. Hold on, hold on, hold on. One at a time. This isn't American democracy. One at a time. Be polite. Yes, go. T in terms of X? Okay. Oh, I'm frozen. Thank you. So, you did this one right here. So we get X minus 3 is equal to T squared. T squared. So what is T equal? Plus or minus the square root of X minus 3, correct? Seems right. Okay. Uh, so now you're going to plug it in there. So what would you get? Y is equal to plus or minus X minus 3 what? So agenda, oh look at that, it turns into x minus 5. So is this a line? Can you find a starting point? <laughs> Can you figure out when it's moving in a certain direction? Sure. Where does it start? Where does it start? 3, negative 2? Yeah. Seems right. And then as x gets bigger, what happens, what as, as t gets bigger, what happens to x? <laughs> gets bigger. <laughs> so what is this thing doing? It's going in this direction. Up and to the right? Do you agree with that? Nice. Okay, let's look at something slightly new together. Slightly new. Let me get to the right thing here. Here we go. Let's look at a picture here. I left some of the notation in here. What are you looking at right here? What are you looking at? What are you looking at? Um, I see an arc, right? I see an arc. It's the estimation of the length of the arc. Ah, uh, so we're doing, it's not estimation. We're trying to come up with a way to find the actual length of the arc, right? So what does delta x represent? If you had to explain delta x to somebody in algebra 1, what would you say delta x is? How much change in x? How much change in x? A billion miles? That could be it, but generally speaking, when you're talking about delta x and delta y, you're talking about what? Get really, really small. There's the word. There we go. A lot of words. Delta x, real, real little tiny piece of x, right? What's delta y? Change in y, yes. If you were going to use words for, you can't use limit with an Algebra yeah, 1 can't. student. Come on, yeah. come on, edit here a little bit, right? So what are we looking at here? What kind of triangle is that right there? Right triangle. So if you move over delta x, how do you figure how much, how far up you go? Well, that's f prime of x times delta x. That's that distance. So if you wanted to find the distance between, say, points a and b, what theorem do you use? Parametric equation. What? Parametric? No. The distance. Yeah. What's it called? The what theorem? What'd you say, T? Pythagorean theorem. So what's going on here? What's going on here? We're saying, so this is the base of the triangle right here. And what's the next part? That's the height. And what did I do to both the base and the height? What did I do to both of them? I squared them, right? So what do you have in both of them? You have delta x squared and you have what? Delta x squared. So what can you quote unquote factor out of the square root? What can you pull out of the square root? Delta, delta x squared. Delta x squared. So if you pull out delta x squared, what does it become? It becomes delta x. Oh, so what does this mean? What does this allow us to now do? What does this allow us to now do? It allows us to do questions like this. Set up and evaluate an integral to compute the length of the curve of y equals x cubed from 0 to 5. Can someone tell me what they think the integral is going to be? It's going to be integral from what to what? We're doing it in terms of y or x. We're going to do it in terms of x. And what do you think we're going to integrate from and to? 0 to 5. And what do you think we're going to integrate here? The square root of what? The square root of what? 1 plus, oh, what's y prime? What's y prime? 3x squared, so 1 plus what? Look at the formula above. What do we do to the derivative? What do we do to the derivative? Square it. So it's going to be 3x squared what? Hey, and conveniently, what does the formula give us on the outside? 
That is the length of the curve from 0 to 5, where the curve is y equal x cubed. There it is. <laughs> That's it. Now, if I asked you to evaluate that, what kind of feelings do you have if I asked you to evaluate that integral? You feel great? <laughs> you feel great? I like that. It's good to have confidence, right? So this right here, what does this represent? What is that right there? What is that? That's just dy dx. And what are you doing to it? You're squaring it. That's great. Remember, this only works if you have a function of the form y equals f of x. Is that parametric? No. no. So this is for Cartesian. We will get to parametric in a second, but you need to see Cartesian first. Here's the thing. If you don't have a calculator, this is real work. If this is something you are given on the calculator section or I give you a cal, do not do this by hand. There ain't no good way to do this by hand. Take out your calculator right now and evaluate this, cal this integral using your calculator to at least to three decimal places. To three decimal places. 125.6 what? 125.680. Who got that? Yay, you're popular today. So this is really key, everybody. The one real big lesson is, well, the smaller lesson is here's the formula. I think you can memorize it. It's not that bad. The big lesson is arc length Cartesian integrals are usually going to be a pain in the butt or really easy. If you are given your calculator, please use it. Seriously, take a look at that. It'll be 1 plus 9x to the fourth. Do you have any good way of doing that? Not so much. Just please don't. Just use your calculator, okay? So, and then also, uh, uh, I just did zoom uh, trig, I think. Zoom trig, and I ended up with this graph. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so if we want to find, if we want to find the arc length now, if we want to find the arc length, we need to set up an integral. Write down what you think the integral should be right now. Write down what you think the integral should be. Write it down. Write down what you, th what you think the integral should be. So when you say that, be really careful about it. So you're, you find the derivative with of x with respect to t and y, which you did. Just make sure you square it carefully. So when you evaluate this, you had it right. 0 to 2 pi of the square root of 4 sine squared t plus cosine squared t. Again, is that, that's not super impossible to find. What about evaluating that? Would you ever want to evaluate that by hand? No. Not so much. <laughs> Not so much. Not so much. Do that on your calculator right now. Tell me what that is. Tell me what that is right now. Uh, when you get it, just keep it to yourself so everybody can figure it out on their own. Three decimal places, please. Three decimal places. Three decimal places. Yay, nice. What is this right here? So we already kind of looked at this. If you have a parametric equation and you want the slope of a curve at the, a given point, dy dx is going to be dy dt over dx dt. It's the change in y over the change in x, but it's been parameterized in terms of t. Are you okay with that blue box right there? Mm -hmm. Okay, this statement right here <coughs> is the chain rule. If w was in terms of x, so look, the chain rule tells us that if w is any differentiable function in terms of x, then dw dx is gonna be dw dt over dx dt. Do you remember that? Do you remember that, everybody? If w, if w is in terms of x and x is in terms of t, if w is in terms of x and x is in terms of t, dw dx, the change in w with respect to x is going to be dw dt divided by dx dt. That is the definition of the chain rule. Take a look at that, stare at it for like 30 seconds, and make sure you're comfortable with that. Can you do that for me? Just stare at that. Let's just stare at it together. Let's stare at it here. This first part. So if you want the point, what do you plug in? T equals pi over 4. So x at pi over 4 is going to be what? Cosine pi over 4. So what is that? Root 2 over what? 2. And y is equal, sorry, y of, it's y of t, right? So it's y of? pi over 4 equals sine of pi over, pi over 4, which is what? Rad 2 over 2. So t equals pi over 4 corresponds to what point? Root 2 over 2 comma what? Root 2 over 2. You with me so far? OK, so let's say I asked you uh, if we wanted the slope of the curve at that point. How do we find the slope of the curve at that point? What do we need to find first? Well, dy dx is the slope of the curve at that point, but we know dy dx is going to be dy what? dt over 
dx dt all evaluated at t equals pi over 4. Well, what's dy dt? What's dy dt? Cosine t. And what's dx dt? Negative sine t. Do you see that, everybody? So what do we end up with? We plug in what? Pi over 4? Root 2 over 2 over what? Negative root 2 over 2. Does that simplify a little bit? Well, root 2 over 2 times negative 2 over root 2. So what's that come out to be? Negative 1. Are you with me so far? So what does that tell us? We just found dy dx when t is equal to what? We found that that equals what? Negative 1. Are you OK so far? Raise your hand if you're OK with what we did so far. Pretty good? The next part, so that corresponds, so that's the, the slope. Well, we just found it, negative 1. And what is this now asking us for here? The second derivative at that point. So to find the second derivative, let's use that blue box up there. What does this first thing tell us to do right here? Do the, well, inside, just the yellow box up top. Do the derivative with respect to t of dy dx. Do we have dy dx? This right here is what? That is dy dx, right? So we need to do d dt of what? Cosine t over negative sine t. What, do you, what rule do you need in order to do? We haven't used this in a long time, right? So that would be low times the derivative of the high. What's the derivative of the high? Low d high, so, negative sine, low d high, minus high, what's the derivative of the bottom? Negative, negative cosine t, is that, do you have to be really careful about that? Over what? Sine squared t. Negative sine t what? Squared. squared. Does this simplify? What's the top become? Sine squared t plus what? Oh, good job, t, uh, chai what? <laughs> t. Cosine squared t all over what? Sine squared t? Well, what's that numerator? One. So that's 1 over what? We're not quite done yet. We've just done the derivative with respect to t of dy dx, but what do you need to divide it by? dx dt. What was dx dt? Negative sine of what? t. So we now know that the second derivative of y with respect to x is going to be 1 over sine squared t divided by what? Well, negative sine t. Is it negative sine t? Yeah. So what's our second derivative? 1 over what? Negative sine cubed t, correct? And we wanted it when t was equal to what? Pi over 4. Is that a really good trig value? Could, yeah. <laughs> could it be a lot worse? Yeah. Yeah, so you have 1 over negative sine cubed of pi over 4, right? So what is that? 1 over negative what? Root 2 over 2. So that's 1 over negative. Yeah, I know. 2 root 2 over what? 2 root 2 over, oh, cubit, sorry, thank you. 2 root 2 over what? 8. So what do you end up with? 8 over negative 2 root 2. So what do you get? 4 over negative root 2. You could stop there, but we don't. sometimes we don't like radicals in our denominator. Root 2 over root 2. What do you end up with? 4 root 2 over negative 2. So what do you end up with? Negative 2 root 2. Done. Come on. You're like, come on, man.